The year is 168 BC. Rome has assumed dominance over the Mediterranean world. Just taking a look at this map doesn't paint a fair picture of just how dominant Rome already was at this point. The once powerful merchant state of Carthage had been defeated in two wars and had been reduced to a rump state. Its Spanish holdings now in Roman hands, and its African holdings would only remain independent for a few more decades. The Hellenistic city-states still remained free, but they were forbidden to wage war against each other as Rome guaranteed all the city-states their independence. The Macedonian kings have been defeated in two wars, and their independence would only last a few more years before falling under direct Roman rule. In Anatolia, a new regional power had recently emerged, the Roman allied kingdom of Pergamon. Pergamon had received all of their lands after Rome had driven out the Seleucid king Antiochus the Great from Anatolia. Following the Treaty of Apamea, his son was taken hostage by the Romans. This was Antiochus IV Epiphanes. He had by now returned to his father's old kingdom to rule as its new king. He was an eccentric man. He called himself Epiphanes, which can roughly be translated to God Manifest. Some of his contemporaries, however, called him Epimenes, meaning the mad, a wordplay on his title. He was eager to emulate his great father, Antiochus wanted to continue the restoration of the once powerful Seleucid Empire. After his ascension, Antiochus took care to maintain good relations with the Roman Republic, sending an embassy to Rome in 173 BC with a part of the unpaid indemnity still owed from the 188 BC Treaty of Apamea. While in Rome, the embassy secured a renewed treaty of friendship and alliance with Rome. The king of Egypt was Ptolemy VI. He was Antiochus's nephew. He had been forcibly put on the throne by his uncle so he could be controlled. The citizens of Alexandria, however, appealed to Ptolemy VIII, the brother of Ptolemy VI, and to his sister Cleopatra II to form a rival government. Antiochus realized he was beginning to lose control in Egypt. So he decided to muster his army and march into Egypt to restore his influence in 168. Antiochus sent a fleet to capture Cyprus, which was under Ptolemaic control, and the island surrendered to him. Antiochus then marched his massive army into Egypt, occupying Lower Egypt and setting up camp outside Pelusium. The weak king Ptolemy in Alexandria was powerless to defend his territories. But he did have powerful friends. He sent word to the Senate in Rome and requested aid against Antiochus. Instead of sending its powerful legions to aid the beleaguered Ptolemaic kingdom, Rome sent one man. The senator, Gaius Popilius Linus, together with a small retinue. When Popilius came close to Antiochus's camp outside Pelusium, it was obvious to everyone that the city could not hold out against Antiochus. The city was about to fall any day now. Popilius walked calmly into the Seleucid camp, making his way towards the tent of the king. Hearing that embassies from Rome had arrived, Antiochus quickly came out to meet them, greeting them with a big smile and reaching out his hand to shake Popilius's hand. Papilius, however, placed in his hand the copy of the Senatus Consultum and told him to read it first, not thinking it proper to make the conventional sign of friendship before he knew if his intentions were friendly or hostile. It was a decree from the Senate and the people of Rome ordering the king to cease this war against their ally. After reading it through, Antiochus looked up and saw the stern faces of the Romans. He knew he had sufficient forces to conquer Egypt with ease, and Ptolemy could put up little resistance against his invasion. For a few moments, he hesitated, 
astounded at such a peremptory order. So what could this small Roman retinue hope to accomplish? He could have easily overcome them and killed them on the spot. But he was well aware that Rome meant business. His father, Antiochus the Great, had suffered a decisive defeat by Roman hands at the Battle of Magnesia in 190 BC, and was subsequently forced to give up most of their land in Anatolia to the Roman allied state of Pergamon. So, what was he to do? Perhaps hoping a compromise could be worked out, he responded that he needed time to consider this new intelligence and confer with his counsellors and friends what to do, and that he would summon the Romans once he had made his decision. Papilius, a stern and imperious man, walked up to Antiochus and drew a circle around the king with the stick he was carrying and said, Before you step out of that circle, give me a reply to lay before the Senate. Implying Rome would declare war, if the king stepped out of the circle without committing to leave Egypt immediately. Antiochus was stunned by the audacity of Papilius. He quickly weighed his options, and he agreed to withdraw his forces from Egypt and Cyprus, just as the Senate and the people of Rome had decreed. At once, Papilius's hard demeanour changed. Smiling warmly, he came forward to shake Antiochus's hand, and embraced him as a friend to Rome. Antiochus was deeply hurt and complaining indeed, but yielded to the circumstances. Ptolemaic Egypt fell forever out of his influence and into Roman influence instead. Over centuries, Rome had gained a reputation for its responsible use of power to protect its allies. This determination was by now backed by the extraordinary power that Rome now wielded. So even when the two remaining empires of the Hellenistic world came to blows, a simple letter from the Senate was enough to call the whole thing off. Antiochus may have resented the arrogance of the circle drawing, but Rome offered him war or friendship. The only sensible course of action was to accept their demands, or face a foe he knew he could not best. In this way, the Romans saved the kingdom of Ptolemy, which had almost been crushed out of existence, Polybius. Our two main sources for this event is Titus Livius, now commonly referred to as Livy, and Polybius. Their accounts differ in one key detail. Livy claims that Antiochus laid siege to Alexandria. Polybius, however, maintained that it was Pelusium. Polybius was contemporary with the events, whereas Livy lived about 100 years later, so I've mainly used Polybius for the account of the events. Thanks for watching. It's a shorter video than we usually make, but I found this event so fascinating I wanted to make a video about it. Remember to like and subscribe to not miss any of our future uploads.